What's up with you? Get out of. Sorry, David, did I wake you? <sighs> Michael, you'll miss the bus. You should have done that last night. Mum, can we have our holiday money on skin? You'll get your pocket money at the end of the week, as usual. Don't they give us some of you, is he? Yeah, well, he ain't here, is he? Now, I've got your granddad to pick up in 15 minutes, so move it. Well, can we get to lift and we don't? Oh, you've had a stroke, have you? Well, I might have. Don't think so. Never done a stroke in your life. <sighs> Shut it, clever dick. Cut it out, you two. For pity's sake, now move it. Stupid going home in your pyjamas. No, I've got my clothes in the car. I'll get changed and leave my pyjamas here ready. Ready for what? For another night when I can't settle. Change your mind and move into my place. No, no, I can't. Alfred, why not? Well, I went for one, Alfred wouldn't like it. Oh, do you know, that's just the sort of gormless repartee I'm missing before I go to bed. Anyway, I'm not moving. I mean, apart from anything else, you, well, you, you're different when you're in that new place. How do you mean? Well, spouting all posh. Spouting all posh? Yeah, you know, like talking la di da. Are you referring to my diction? Oh, I don't know. What you must realise, David, is that people in my position have standards to maintain. It's no good being king of one's castle and talking like the footman. Yeah. Or the driver. No, you're not just a driver. You're my personal chauffeur. Well, I don't want to be a chauffeur. I want to be a taxi driver like before. <sighs> hello, Linda. Oh, hello, Doctor. What are you doing here? Oh, I brought Mal's father in for his physiotherapy. All oh, right. How's he doing? Oh, improving slowly. I'm afraid that's off in the way with strokes. You look preoccupied. I thought that something had happened. No, just the usual ups and downs. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about your medication. It's nothing to worry about. It's just a review, really. Would you call into the surgery later on today? Later? Yes, all right. Make a time with Jenny? Yeah, right. What are you doing here? Well, that's a nice warm welcome, Sister dear. Oh, forget the flannel. Just tell me why you're here. I was in the area and it seemed rude not to drop in. Well, you shouldn't have bothered, because wherever you go, trouble's not that far behind. Chrissy, don't be like that. Well, then just tell me what you want. Food, money and a bed for the night. Well, he did ask. Hey, Alan. 
I hope nobody important sees me arriving like this. Don't think I've gone bust. What's this? It's all I've got. It's enough to get you home. Yeah, on a fast track to losing my legs. These blokes don't fool around, Christine. You should have thought of that before you gambled what you haven't got. Oh, hello, Mr Scribbs. How are you today? Very well, Christine, thank you. Your usual and the lunchtime menu? Thank you. Is your chauffeur going to wait outside in the car? Uh, no, no, he's off on other business. Oh. He uh, runs a small taxi firm in his spare time, and I hate to discourage enterprise. So we've left the Bentley at home today. I see. I just thought I'd have some sandwiches sent out to him. Oh, that's very kind of you. Do you know, if I could persuade him to stop, I would. And then he'd be in here with me having a slap-up meal in the restaurant. He's not just a chauffeur. He's more like a son, really. <laughs> Where'd you get them? We punked our school and chopped them. You sell them to Cluffy, we'll split the money. Why aren't you selling yourself? He hates us. Thought we got a load. Seven or six? Pass them to Cluffy. Won't keep you a moment, Mrs. Horford's way. Thank you. Seven and six. We'll give it here then. Half a crown each. It's not brains. Here's a tanner. Don't spend it all at once. The North Moor Spout. Now you can see why I'm so happy to live up here. Sure. I'm happy that you're happy, sis. But you left a lot of friends behind. I'm making new ones. So I noticed that Mr. Scripps seemed very taken. How did he get his brass? Windfall, I gather. I know he's not about to share it all with me. <laughs> Don't be so sure I saw a definite twinkle. There's no one to hear me, there's nothing to say. And What's that place? Some old ruin. Hasn't been lived in for years. Has Linda Rollins made an appointment yet? No. Now, why doesn't that surprise me? Does her husband spend much time at home now? Oh, less and less, I hear. The money he earns must be some compensation, I suppose. Um, I'll just be a moment. It's Dennis. He rang earlier to ask me out for a drink. Good. Is it? Absolutely. It's about time the pair of you made up. He's been in the doghouse long enough, don't you think? I assume my assistant must have sold a lot. When she said she hadn't, a penny dropped. How much did you give him? Seven and six. To buy my own sticks back. Stood there as if butter wouldn't melt. You found the sticks? Yeah. Where? In a pram, in the bushes. And you didn't think they could belong to somebody? Michael? No. The shop owner thinks they were taken from his yard. Well, then it couldn't have been Michael. He was at school. But Barry wasn't. What? Barry? Constable Crane says you weren't at school. Why not? Uh, they gave me the day off. What for? Good behaviour. Oh, don't talk rubbish. Barry, did you take the sticks from the yard? 
What sticks? Did your brother give you them to sell? I just said. I found them. Look, you might sleep better if you didn't eat here so often. Really? Yeah. My mother says too much rich food isn't good for you. Does she now? Yeah, she almost choked to death once on an Eccles cake. So that's how you got the money to go to the pictures. Get out of my sight! Go on, both of you! When your dad gets home, you're for it! I had a call from the travel agent this morning. Oh? She says she can only hold the reservations for another couple of days. But I thought you cancelled it. Well, I tried to, but she wouldn't hear of it. She said if I wasn't going on honeymoon with you, then she'd go with me instead. <laughs> and what did you say? I said thanks, but I'll stick with plan A. Even if plan A isn't exactly stuck on me. Oh, yeah, not so bad. Thanks. Uh, pardon, please. So it's, uh, it's back on again, is it, with Sergeant Jenny? Yeah, well, it looks like it. They've been canoodling over there ever since they came in. Half on, half on. Hey, you're a good one to talk. Having taken Gina away on holiday, I thought you might be making an honest woman of her at last. It's not for luck in trying, I can tell you, Oscar. Where is she, by the way? She's in the kitchen. All right. Thanks, Oscar. Excuse me a minute. Any of those going spare? Hey, no. They've been made to order. The Domino's team count every single one. Well, that's a pity. They smell good. And so do you. Yeah. Odour pork stuffing. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, why? No, she's been a bit quiet lately, that's all. Fine. Well, you get this a lot cheaper in the off-licence, Linda. I know. But this is near and I've left the boys. I'd never have guessed that vodka was Miles' father's tipple. No, well... So, uh, how is Mal? Fine, last time I spoke to him. Remember me to him? I will. And I hope the old boy enjoys his birthday treat. Don't worry about that. I'll just be a second. Linda? Oh, hello. What happened? The doctor was expecting you. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I forgot. Well, best you call in and make an appointment tomorrow. Yeah, right. Still no sign. He's usually spot on. Come inside. I'll call you another taxi. Right. Good. That's fine. Pocket Ventress. Sorry, Sad. What's special about today, Ventress? Nothing, Sad. I always bring a packet of crisps with me. It's the first day of the school holidays. Oh, yes. So we know what's in store. Holiday for them means work for us. And just so we don't clog up the files with petty infringements, the Chief Super has written a standard letter of caution for any young tearaway who qualifies for the rap over the knuckles. All right? Yes, sir. Riding along in my automobile My baby beside me at the wheel I stole a kiss at the turn of a mile 
my curiosity running wild. I'm cruising and playing the radio with no particular place to go. Hey, man. It's an official warning. But Michael said he found the firewood. I think we both know how he came by it. Either way, he sold what didn't belong to him. I don't understand it. Barry's as daft as a brush. But Michael's a bright lad. So I'm told. He's the only one in his class to pass the 11 plus. All he wants to do is hang around with Barry and his gang. Lads of that age, Mrs Rollins. They come through it. <laughs> I'll be on my way. Mohammed won't come to the mountain. Oh, if it's not convenient, I can... I was just going. Bye, Mrs Rollins. Doctor? Problems? Bernard, have you seen David? No. He didn't pick me up at Webster's Hotel last night as arranged. Probably forgot. And he didn't sleep in his bed either. Now, he doesn't normally forget that. For good, hopefully. According to my records, they were prescribed when your mother died two years ago. Oh, yes, about the time Mal got his job in Aberdeen. I had the funeral to arrange, his father to look after him. I just couldn't cope. And antidepressants are perfectly sensible in those circumstances. But, but it's very important, Linda, that you don't become dependent on them. I'm sorry, Doctor. This isn't a good time to ask me to give them up. Why not? Well, nothing especially. It's just... I still feel a bit shaky. I don't think I could cope without my pills. So, uh... How long are you going to keep me here? Depends. On what? On your boss coming up with the money. <laughs> well, I told you I'm not even family. I mean, you should have kidnapped somebody worth having, like a beetle or Shirley Bassey. Leave the business side of things to me, eh? So, um, how much are you asking for me? Five grand. Five grand what? Five thousand pounds. Five thousand? I mean, Mr Vernon's going to have to give you five thousand pounds, or... Or I can't go home. <laughs> Vernon Scripps? I've got him. Who is this? I've got your driver. You got David? Where? Somewhere safe for the moment. I'm not with you. He's safe just as long as you do as I say. What do you want? Five thousand pounds. Look, what makes you think I've got that sort of money? Don't play games, Mr Scripps. And don't go telling the police or it'll be the worst for your lad. I'll call tomorrow with instructions. Is David there now? Hello?
They're not letting me down now. What? See that window? Frankie says if we get a load of ciggies, we could sell them easy. No. It's too risky. It's too small for me, our kid. Sticking with me or not? Hi, Liz. Gina, how are you? Still feeling a bit rough. Same symptoms? Yeah. Have the test results come back? No, not yet, but I'll chase them up. In the meantime, don't jump to any conclusions. I'll try not to. Ta-ra. Bye now. What were you going to do with the cigarettes? Answer the constable. Don't know. Who was with you? Nobody. Mr. Blayton heard running footsteps. Who was waiting, Michael? You had a letter from us warning you about your future conduct. You're now in breach of that caution. What does that mean? It means Sergeant Merton may decide to prosecute. No, Constable, it's only 12. I'm sorry, Mrs. Rollins. You see what you've done? You've got yourself a criminal record. Of course you should tell the police. Bernard, this bloke meant business. Well, the police will know what to do. They're used to this sort of thing. Sheep rustling and folk dropping litter is what they're used to round here, not kidnapping. Maybe so, but they'll have a book about it. Oh, wonderful. By the time they've read the manual, David's fingers will be in the post. So, you're going to pay up, are you? Whatever it takes to get the lad back. It's an awful lot of money, Vernon. Could talk them down a bob or two. You expect me to haggle? What price life, Bernard? Especially when that person happens to be my right-hand man. And besides, all the people around here have said some pretty rotten things about me since I came into money. Well, now they can see just how wrong they were. Hold on, I'll be back. Afternoon. I had high hopes for you. A doctor, a solicitor, that's what I had in mind. <laughs> a solicitor with a criminal record. What's for good, Mum? Get your own. It's nothing in, I've looked. Well, look again. Can we have chips? I'm not cooking chips. Well, from the chippy, then. Barry, forget it. Please, Mum. Oh, 
You do know how to play pontoon. Yeah. Twist. Hello, Mrs. Rollins. What now? We're investigating a traffic accident. We think you might be able to help. I don't know anything about an accident. You are the owner of a Morris Minor 860 WYB. Yes. It's reported to have been in collision with another car. Upstairs, you two. So you popped to the chip shop? Yes, but if it were me, I'd have felt a bump. Did you have anything to drink before you popped out? To drink? A cup of tea, perhaps? Nothing stronger? I don't drink anything stronger. The witness said they saw your car veering from side to side. I don't drink. Then you won't mind taking a breath test, then, will you? No, I can't. I'm sorry I told you. I can't help you. Refusal to take the test will leave you liable for arrest and prosecution. OK. Deep breath. Positive. You, uh, let's find a neighbour to keep an eye on the boys. What? You're going to have to come down to the station with us. I can't. Mrs Rollins, I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving with more than the prescribed limit of alcohol in the blood. You will also be reported for failing to stop after an accident. It's impossible. You're not obliged to say anything, but what you do say may be put in writing and given in evidence. I need to go to the bathroom. Scripps. What's up? We've had information that David Stockwell's been kidnapped. Who told you that? Your brother. Brother, you call him. Copper's not more like. He tells us you're willing to pay the ransom. That's none of your business. Ah, well, let's just you wrong, I'm afraid. Payment of ransom is a concealing offence. You are? You're helping the kidnapper to commit the crime. I'd advise you to give us your fullest cooperation. Mrs. Rollins! What's going on? Been in there since you left. You get a neighbour? Yeah. Mrs. Rollins! Come on, let's get it over with. Hey, what are you doing? You can't get out of it like that, you know. Come on. You were 
right, Linda. Don't worry about the boys, Linda. I spy with my little eye something beginning with... L. L. Now, I wonder what that could be. Lips. Nope. Laces. Nope. Leg. <laughs> nope. What's going on? Oh, uh, brought Mrs. Rollins in on a drink drive charge. Is she driving in this state? No. She's tied a few on since trying to fool the system, but I told her I said it won't do you any good. Phone Dr. Merrick. Latch. Nope. Lock. Nope. Log. No, nope. look. Do you give up? One last go. Go on then. Lamp. Nope. No. No. What then? Little dead moth. <laughs> oh, they could kick yourself. In here, Doctor. Linda? Linda? Call an ambulance. Why, what is it? Quickly! What's happened? Mrs Rollins collapsed at the station. I've been sent to have a look round. What for? We're not sure what's wrong with her. Upset. That's what's wrong with her. Bobby's on the doorstep day and night. Husband nowhere to be seen. So she might have had a drink. There's no law against that. Not yet, anyway. What is it? Trouble. You thought she was trying to evade the charges? Yes, Sarge. And there was no sign of a pill bottle? No. Did you look? Well, no, not really, no. Was there anything to indicate that Mrs Rollins was desperate enough to do what she did? No, Sarge. No, Sarge. All right, thank you. Make sure your notebooks carry a clear and a full account. I knew something wasn't right with her. Yeah, well, we're not doctors, Steve, but we did what we had to do. We're in the clear. Yes, sir. I want to see the sergeant in charge. The name's Mal Rollins. Mr. Rollins, Sarge. Ah, oh, come in, Mr. Rollins. I better be going. No, no, please. This is Dr. Merrick. She was called to see your wife last night. I hear Linda's making a steady recovery. No thanks to anyone here. As soon as Dr. Merrick diagnosed the problem, action was taken, Mr. Rollins. Slap on the back, then. Job well done. My men responded to an accident report, as was their duty. Duty, was it? To bully a woman and two kids in their own home until she takes an overdose? Your wife consumed a quantity of alcohol in the bathroom, Mr. Rollins. My officers thought she was trying to sabotage further tests. I would probably have thought the same myself. Yeah, of course you would. Mr. Rollins, the breath test showed she was over the limit. Robbie, she hardly touches the stuff. 
I'm telling you the facts. Well, here's another. She was in your care when she took those pills, and that's what I'll be telling my solicitor. Easy come, easy go. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you're making it too easy for him. He'll come back for more, if not to you, to somebody else. Don't rush and note everything down. Vernon Scripps? Have you got the money? I, I need a bit more time. No more time. I want it today. Beg, borrow or steal it if you want to see your mate again. Look, how do I know you've got him? Hello, Mr Vernon! David, are you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. He hasn't harmed you, has he? No, no, no. But... He has got a right nasty temper when he loses at high spy. Keep him talking. Have you, uh, have you had enough to eat? Oh, yeah, we've had a egg sandwich. That, with... That's enough. I've got, I've got to go now. Uh, wait a minute. Can't spout no more. David! Shut up, listen. Put 5,000 in... Used notes in a plain grip bag. In exactly one hour from now, I want you and the bag in the middle of the railway bridge between Aidensfield and Elsenby. What about David? Do what I say, your mate will be freed. Try anything stupid, and he won't. He wants me in the middle of Elsenby Bridge in an hour with the money. What did David say? What? What did he say, exactly? Oh, he said something about... This bloke was a bad loser, it's I spy. I spy? Did he say anything else? No, he took the phone off him. He said he couldn't spout no more. He couldn't spout no more? The kidnapper said that? No, David did. Does it ever occur to you that David could be brighter than you think? In a word, no. In? Out, in, out. Go put your head in the North Moor spout. Jump to the rooftops, bounce on the floor, but keep on skipping till you spout no more. I think he was trying to give us a clue to his whereabouts. David was? That's my hunch. Nah. Well, at school, he acted as a goalpost in the winter, and in the summer, he held the skipping rope. He never moved a muscle all year, but he'd know all the rhymes. Can I have a word, Sarge? Yes. <coughs> Go and find Mr Scripps a comfortable seat in the duty room, would you? No, you can leave the bag here. It is a police station. First pass? Could be. Drop it! He's under the bridge. Move!
five grand he paid for you, is that man a saint or a sucker? Good question. You're the honest Phil. Constable. My sergeant suggested I call and see how you're doing. Oh, much better, thanks. I feel so ashamed. There are people here with real problems. Your problems are real enough, Mrs. Rollins. I shouldn't have driven, I know that. I wasn't intending to go out, so I had a drink. Just the one. Yeah. I thought I'd be all right. Linda Rollins needs help, not punishment. Oh, agreed. But if we don't prosecute, it will seem like we have something to hide, or worse. You know, we're not entirely blameless. Who's we? Doctors, pharmacists. Thanks. What for? Listening. And sharing the blame? Every little helps. Well, it's my pleasure. How about sharing a life as well? Is this a new proposal of marriage? Well, it must be weeks since the last one. <laughs> Doesn't time fly? Time is not on my side. So let's do it. What do you mean that? Been to see Linda. There was no hint of complaint. Well, when she gets back here, she'll see things differently. When was the last time you came home, Mr. Rollins? What's that got to do with you? I just wondered if you were aware of her problems. What problems? She was happy enough before you barged in. She let us in, Mr. Rollins. And she wasn't happy, she was desperate. And without family support, she turned to alcohol. Don't talk rubbish. That's the lads. You leave them out of it. He's right, Dad. We'll show you. She was really hiding these from herself. What now? If you make a complaint, her situation will become public. I don't think that will help her much. What about the charge? If we can be sure that Linda will have your support, Sergeant Merton might be persuaded to review the case. Review it? There could be grounds for not prosecuting. If I stay here and look after her? What do you think? What about Michael? The same. You can stay here, Dad. Well, it's, um, it's looking that way, son. For good? Let's see, eh? I've got a few things to sort out, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant! It was a bit of a shock, that's all I'm saying. Well, it was just as much a shock to me, David. I mean, a bag full of newspaper cuttings. David, I didn't know about it either. Well, he might have opened that bag if Mr. Ventress hadn't found me. All credit to you, David. Oh, how was that, Alf? Well, go on, tell them how we found you. Well, why don't you? Oh. In, out, in, out. Go put your head in the Northmore's spout. Jump to the rooftops, bounce on the floor, but keep on skipping till you spout no more. Yes? Yeah. 
<laughs> What's all this, then? I don't know. I've never heard it before. Phil, can I have a word? Yeah. Uh, two pies, please, Oscar. Hey, you look worried. What's up? Something serious? Yeah. Yeah, it's serious. Hey, come on. Can't be that bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phil. Sorry for what? I'm pregnant. Are you sure? I'm certain. I've had the tests. Flipping heck. Well, there's only one thing I can say. Fantastic! Hey! Hey, everyone! I'm gonna be a dad! <laughs> Come on! Here he comes like a dose of scotch mist. Kenny! Do you think it's too much? I'd say it's absolutely perfect. Put the gun down! Quick, you Get away from here! I'll shoot her! Look, I'm asking you as a mate. Walk away. I thought we were mates too. But you don't know me at all, do you?